It's good to see this many fathers in the house. Amen. Don't be seated now. I'm like Brother Bill. I don't like to tell stories, but this is a, this is the truth. I remember as a little boy, our neighbor would ask us to go to church. We never went to church, but I was big enough to know to go to church. But the reason I was going to church with the neighbor was to get out of work. And I can remember going to church, and I can count on one hand that the, the men, the fathers, that was in the church back then. And it seems like it's changed. There's about as many men as there are women now, and that's great. I mean, the man is supposed to be the leader of the house. How are you going to be the leader of the house if you don't come to church? And I just thank the Lord for the fathers that's here this morning. I've got just a little scripture here this morning. It's always an honor to get to stand here behind this sacred desk and try to do a little something for the, the one that saved me. The one that kept, it's got me in his hands, it's going to keep me from going down that road that leads pain and torment. His name is Jesus Christ. If you got your Bibles, turn with me to John 14. I know what you think, but you're going to be a little bit surprised this morning. I'm not going to the first three verses. I love John 14. I could preach out of it every time I got behind this desk. John 14, 5. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus answered and said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. This morning, I'd like to speak to you just a little bit about two ways. There's a right way, and there's a wrong way. There's a narrow path, and there's a broad path. The narrow path is the path we go down if we want to enter into the kingdom of heaven. Over in the book of Luke, the story about a man, a rich man, had everything that you could ever want. And a beggar, lack. Eat the crumbs from his table. You know the story. But here's what I got to pull out of this uh, scripture this morning. is the wrong way. They both, both died. Abraham was carried into, or uh, Lazarus was carried into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man lifted his eyes up in torment. In other words, he lifted his eyes up in hell. That's what the Bible says. In hell, he lifted up his, his eyes, being in torment, and seeing Abraham afar off and Elijah in his bosom. So that right there tells us that there's two ways. There's a wrong way and there's a right way. The right way is the way that I want to go. I just couldn't, I can't understand why anybody would want to live in torment for eternity. We don't have to. We don't have to live in, in that pain. There's a way that we can get around that. Ephesians 2 and 8, for grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourself, so see right there, it tells us we can't, we can't save ourselves. We've got to come to Jesus Christ. We've got to come to the cross in order to ask forgiveness of our sins. But first, we've got to realize that we're a sinner. Right. Romans 
3 and 3 says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means you. That means me. That means everybody. So we've got to get down on our knees in front of Jesus Christ and ask forgiveness for what we have done wrong. We're born as a sinner. There's no getting around that. Brother, I was born a sinner. I'm saved by grace. Praise the Lord! Simple. No country boy like me. Hey, God loves me. He loves you. He loves a sinner. He's got his arms out this morning for any and all that will come. The Bible says he come for the lost. He didn't come for the righteous. He was the lost. There's no need going to the doctor if you're not sick. If you've been saved, Jesus Christ loves you. But he come for the ones that's lost, the ones that's sick, sin sick, once headed towards hell. And folks, we've got to come to the foot of the cross in order to enter into the kingdom of heaven. The only way that we can be with our Lord and Savior is come to the foot of the cross. Ephesians uh, 10, for we are his workmanship created in Jesus Christ unto good works, which God has before ordained that we walk, shall walk therein. It's not saying that we, I, I can preach good enough to get to heaven. It's not saying that you can do enough work in the church or work for Jesus Christ to get into heaven. It's not saying that. It's a lot of people says, oh, I can work my way in. I can buy my way in. I'm telling you this morning, you cannot do either one. The only way is at the foot of the cross. What this is talking about is we do good works for the Lord. But that's not going to save us, Brother Keith. That's not going to get it. But we, as Christians, are to work for our sake. Do good works for them. Romans 6 and 23. For the wages of sin is death. Our sins will kill us. We'll die. Our sins will kill us. We'll die. But listen, there's more to that. If we've been saved, we won't taste it of death. If we've been saved, the Bible says that we'll die. This old body will die. This old clay will die. It's going back to the dirt. This body will go back to the dirt. But our soul will live for eternity if we've been saved. If we're living for Jesus Christ, we've got home in heaven. In my father's house are many mansions. Hallelujah. One of them's mine. I don't know about you, but one of them's mine. Amen. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our, our Lord. <coughs> Folks, it's so simple for us to be saved. It's so simple. People makes it so hard. It's so simple that a, a child understands. These little kid, these little boys back here, if they can tell you, there's in my Sunday school class, they can tell you how to be saved. They know it's simple. But us older folks, we make a mountain out of it. Oh, I have to do this, I have to do that. Just like I preached the other night. There's nothing in Egypt to go back to. There's nothing in your life that you have to give up that was any account to start with That's to get right. saved. Right. I didn't give up anything. Not one thing did I give up, Brother Don. When I got saved, I didn't want to do those, That's right. those things. 
Didn't want it. If you don't want something, you don't have to give it up. But that's what our Lord will do for you. He'll clean you up inside and out. John 10, 7. Then Jesus said unto them, I said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. All that ever come before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. Folks, how would it feel if that's all we had to look forward to was a bunch of thieves and a bunch of robbers every day. But you know, Jesus was glad to see those folks. Because that's the kind of folks that would get saved. You clean an old drunkard up, get him saved, you've got somebody that's going to work for the Lord. You've got somebody that's going to be founded in the Word of God. That's the kind of people that we need to be talking to, is these people, the people that most people don't want to talk to, they don't want to deal with, that's who, as Christians, need to talk to. That's right. Because God loves them just like he loves you. That's right. They're just a sinner. Hey, I was sinners by saved by grace. They can be saved by grace. But we've got to talk to them. That's right. We've got to let them know that we love them, Jesus Christ loves them, and they don't have to spend eternity in hell. Verse 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. I'm going to stop right there. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. Any man comes to the foot of the cross can be saved. It don't matter if he's a thief, it don't matter if he's a robber, whoremonger, drunkard, dopehead, it don't make no difference. That's right. You come and confess your sins to the Lord, sincere, he will change you then. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next year, now, immediately. But sometimes we just make it, oh, I can't do that. Well, what will they think of me? And I'm going to tell you something. It's better for it, let them think anything of you, and you come here and get saved, than it is spend eternity in hell. Because the rich man said he just wanted Lazarus to stick his finger in the water, tip his finger in the water, and had one little drop on his tongue to cool it, because he was in torment in those flames. Now, could you imagine just wanting one little drop of water in hell? When you can live in heaven, whoo, glory! Right. Water freely. All you'd ever want. Hey, I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take that narrow path. I'm gonna go the right way. But so many people think that right way is just just too hard. It's just too hard. I tell you, it is hard sometimes to live as a Christian. It's hard sometimes. But listen to me. We've got one that we can go to that will make it easier. He'll make it so we'll enjoy it. We can lift our heads up as Christians this morning and praise the Lord because he has set us free. When he sets you free, you're free indeed. We've got that to look forward to this morning, if you're a Christian. If, you, if you're not a Christian, if you're not careful, you may end up like the, the old rich man. Maybe I want somebody to come with just a drop of water on your tongue. And the reason I went to that scripture is to let you know that they are two ways. It's plainly wrote in the Bible. It's not hard, You can't misunderstand that. It's simple. You're either on the right way or you're on the wrong way this morning. Verse 
verse 10. He cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But listen to what Jesus said. I come that they may have life and have it more abundant. So we can live for Jesus Christ we can have that mansion. It's our choice. Jesus is not going to grab you by the shirt collar and come say, come up here. I'm not going to grab you by the shirt collar. Brother Bill's not going to grab you. It's your choice. It's our choice what we want to do with our life. If we want to live for Christ and have eternity, or if we want to live for the devil and be in hell. It's our choice this morning. John 6, 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. We've got to believe We don't only have to believe, but we need to be a praying. We need to be a praying that we get that the Lord will just keep the old devil back. We need to be a praying for the ones that's lost. We need to be a doing good works for the Lord. Here's a verse that I really like. It's John 6, 44. No man, come, no man can come to me except the Father which I have sent me draw him. And I will raise him up at the last day. You catch that, folks? I can't come up here and get saved just because I want to get saved. You can't come up here and get saved just because you want to get saved. You can't be scared into salvation. Unless the Father's drawing, it'll do you no good. You can wear your knees out here. If the Father hadn't drawn you, it will not do no good. You've got to be drawn by the Spirit. You've got to be drawn by the Father in order to accept eternal life. John 6. 47, verity, verity, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. So we can believe of course the old devil believes too. The Bible tells us that. The old devil, he believes in Jesus Christ. But we've got to be saved. We've got to be saved and, and believe. John 11, 25 and 26. Jesus said unto her, talking about Martha, when Lazarus was dead, I am the resurrection and life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me Shall never die. That's where I was at a while ago. I jumped ahead of myself. We should never die. In other words, we're going to slip right out of here into eternity. Like I said, this old clay body, it's going back to the dirt. It'll be dust. The Bible teaches us that. It'll go back to the dust, but our soul will live either in heaven or hell. There's no getting around that. The Bible teaches that plainly that we're going, our soul is going to be either in heaven or hell. You can't be halfway. You can't be on the fence. You've got to be either in or either out. Mark 16, 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Matthew 18, 11. 
for the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. It's like I said a while ago, Jesus Christ comes for one purpose, that's to save everyone that wants to be saved. He comes to save all, but all will never be saved. Why you say that, preacher? If I read your Bible, it says, says hell done enlarged itself. Why did hell enlarge itself? Because there's a lot of people going to hell. Plain and simple. It don't get larger unless there's a reason. People going to hell, that's the reason it's enlarged. It seems like the more you talk about Jesus Christ to lost folks, the harder it is to get them to understand. They just, I don't know, just turn a deaf ear. They just don't want to hear it a lot of times. Then again, you talk to someone and they just really, you really think, well, they, they're going to accept Jesus Christ. But old Satan's got a, a tighter hold on them. But I'm telling you, folks, we don't give up on people. If they turn deaf ear, we get a chance we need to witness again. We need to tell them about what Jesus has done for us. You know, I get to thinking about heaven. One day with Jesus left a thousand years. I think the first two days, I think I'm just going to be on my knees talking with Jesus. I think I'll just be on my knees talking with Jesus. I don't know about you. I don't know your heart. I don't know how you are with the Lord. You can tell me you're saved. You can tell Brother Bill. You can tell the deacons. Jesus Christ knows if you've been saved. He knows his heart. He knows all about you. You can't fool him, but you can fool us. 